G'day guys, with all the talk of long exposures with the iPhone, I thought it's time to head back to the Androids and we'll see if we can do some long exposures on the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Let's get into it. So today I went out to Cow Swamp, one of my favourite locations around here for doing long exposure photography. Now on all the Androids, Androids versus iPhones, I often say an Android user is the admin of the phone. That means you've got to do a lot more work to get good results in this type of photography. The camera in general is just awesome. But to do long exposure photography with the S23 Ultra, it's a little bit more complicated. First, and the easiest way you could do it is by getting an ND filter, putting it over the camera system on the phone, making it like a pair of sunglasses and expanding that shutter speed out to up to 30 seconds. But that's all, only 30 seconds. Next up, you can try an app, and there's a few apps out there. Some are good, some are bad, some are just bloody terrible. The first one I tested out here at Cow Swamp is Motion Cam. This is the screenshots. So using this app is dead set simple. You're going to have a few different options that you can do here, motion blur and light trails. You go into the gear icon, you can change the resolution of what you're shooting, that style, that type of photo. We'll select the maximum size here. You can switch the lenses down the bottom left hand corner. It's only going to give us two options here. There's obviously more options on this 23 Ultra, but it doesn't give you that on this app. Next up here, you've got the uh, shutter speed, uh, the shutter duration. You wanted to say, change that from auto, it's on tripod mode now because it's going so far, but I'll tend to lock that into tripod mode because I've got it on a tripod. I'm going to go for about five minutes here and extend or make it brighter by touching the screen, sliding it up, hitting the shutter, and then waiting. I'm going to shoot for five minutes here. The water's moving nice and fast. The clouds are not moving that fast, but I want to get some capture, some motion from the clouds and from the water. Once we're finished, this is the result. Absolutely shit. I wouldn't use this app at all. It's the second time I've reviewed this app and second time I've been disappointed with it. If you look at this, there are grids everywhere. I don't know what it is. It's probably something that's just not been updated for a bloody long time. All those lines that you see there, terrible. The sky, it looks like it's been done with a paintbrush. This app has so much potential, but it's just not hitting the mark with this. So while I was out there, I thought I'm not gonna waste my time. It was pretty windy, pretty cold. I'm gonna head back to using the intervalometer app and then motion stacks, because I know that works with star trails using the light trails and the intervalometer app, and I'm gonna give it a go here as well. So what we do is we set up the camera in regular camera mode, and we're gonna look to take a photo using pro mode on this camera. So we go into pro mode, we're gonna change the shutter speed, we're gonna change the ISO. With the ISO, we want it as low as we can possibly have it, so there's less noise in this photo. Change the shutter speed until you're happy with the exposure of the photo. One, one, fifth, one. Ooh, that's a quick shutter speed. That's where we're going to set it for this one, but for you and what you're doing, it may well be different. After this, we're going to go into the intervalometer app. Open up the intervalometer app, and we're going to use the intervalometer to take many, 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 many photos. I struggled with this a lot, to be honest, and what I found was the you had to turn the camera on its side because it didn't um, auto auto resolve if you like as you move the camera but once you set it up i just set it to infinity and hit the start button and just start letting it take photos i went to let it go for about five minutes and i end up with a bucket load of photos once we've got those photos you don't need to edit them individually don't worry about any of that what we're doing is capturing all that motion in lots of photos and then bringing them into a second app called motion stacks it's going to stack all those photos and blend them to a long exposure photo. So you go into the app again, turn it onto its, onto its, so it's facing portrait and um, orientation that is. Go ahead and select all these photos, bring it in, and there you go. Robert, your mother's brother, long exposure on an Android phone. This I have found to be the best way to do this sort of photo with an Android phone that doesn't already have long exposure functionality put into it. With these sorts of photos, overcast sky, high contrast image, edit this into Lightroom, you end up with a nice black and white photo. That's a pretty bloody good long exposure photo for an Android phone. 
I don't think it's as good as things like even longer, reflex, re-expose, those things that you get on the iPhone. But for an Android phone, it's pretty damn good. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll catch you later.